Continuing with the sampling distribution of the mean, um, what we learned is the following. If I have a variable that I'm calling x that has a normal distribution with uh, mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then um, I can actually take uh, all possible sample size n and every time calculate the means and that will give me the population of um, x bars. And it turns out that these, uh, this population, which we're following the sampling distribution of the mean, uh, has a certain characteristics. First, um, it will have a normal distribution. Okay. Second, it will be centered exactly, so it has its own mu x bar, which is exactly equal to uh, mu. Um, however, it has its own sigma, which we call sigma x bar, and another name for that is, as we said, a standard error. And that standard error is not equal to the original sigma, but actually it's smaller by a factor of square root of n. So it's equal to sigma, the original one, divided by square root of n. And what that means is that if you change your sample size from value, let's say, let's say uh, we were the, the n we were, I was just drawing is n equal to five. If I were to change to n equal to to ten, for example, well, you'll end up again with a normal distribution. Uh, again, the mu x bar will be right in the middle, uh, but it will be narrower. The distribution will be narrower. And if you take, let's say, n equal to, let's say. Uh, 50, well, again, you're going to have a normal distribution centered at mu, but um, it will be much narrower. And so what is happening is that the standard error is getting smaller and smaller. So um, as n increases, the, uh, the standard error, and we said standard error means the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean and a sigma x bar gets a smaller and therefore the distribution gets narrower. And when the distribution gets narrower, what I want you to notice is look at the areas, let's say from here and below, and from here and up, for example, okay? And notice at, at the, what is happening to the area. For the blue distribution, that area is very, very small. For the red distribution, which has a bit larger, more, the sample size a bit bigger, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit bigger. So again, let me draw, let's say n, n is equal to, let's say, 10 here, whereas the original one, the n was equal to, for example, 5. And for the blue one, n is equal to, maybe I said 50, I don't remember. Okay. And therefore, you can notice that the probabilities that are on the tail, yani away from you, these are away from you. So we refer to these, the x bars that are away from you. We call them the extreme values. They are uh, not likely values. They are unlikely values. So these extreme values, the probability of these extreme values to occur, which actually are um, the answer to that question, the probability, is uh, the area that um, I was talking about. Well, this area is getting smaller and smaller as n increases. So as n gets larger and larger, the probability of having x bars that are uh, extreme, uh, it gets smaller and smaller. And you have a much bigger probability to get x bars that are closer to mu that are right here somewhere here okay um, so um, why do I need to talk about the sampling distribution of the mean and how, and how can that help me uh, calculate probabilities well um, if you think about it if you have um, if you have a population with a variable X that has a normal distribution with mu and sigma um, at the beginning of the few few lectures back we had asked the question what is the probability if i pick one observation that this one observation will be between two values um, so maybe a and b and the answer to that question was well you need to turn this into a z and then the answer becomes well this is exactly 
asking the question should the probability of z uh, between two values z of a and z of b where the formula for the z is z equals x minus mu over sigma and that works as long as you have a normal distribution okay now here's the thing if instead of taking one observation like the case we were talking about if i actually am interested in taking a sample now and now i'm interested in asking the question what is the probability of the average of that sample to be between two values okay so uh, let's see t and b can i uh, find the answer to that question it turns out because we just discussed the sampling distribution of the mean then you can think about this x bar as one observation like like this x like this x is one observation coming from this population it turns out that this x bar is one observation coming from a population of x bars and we know uh, all we want to know about this x bar population we know that uh, the x bars have a normal distribution we know they have a mu x bar which turns out to be equal to mu and we know they have a sigma x bar which uh, turns out to be equal to sigma over root square of n meaning i can answer that question using uh, the same approach so I can answer that question by saying, well, that's easy. This is the probability of z between two values, z of c and z of d. But the formula you're going to use now is not z equal x minus mu over sigma. You're going to say it's z equal x bar, since your observation is x bar. The minus, not a mu, but a mu x bar, which you already know is exactly equal to mu. And it's divided not by sigma, but sigma of x bar. And that is how you transform into a z. Okay, so I can rewrite this formula uh, in a way that looks a bit better. So I can write z is equal to x bar, which is the average that I'm interested in minus instead of writing mu x bar i'm just going to write mu because i know it's equal to mu and i'm going to divide by sigma over root square root square of n and that is my z that i will use when i have an x bar and if you think about it this is actually the general form of the z because if your sample was n equal to 1, so if your sample size is 1, meaning you're only taking one observation, the x bar is going to turn to be equal to x. Therefore, you no longer have an x bar here. And the root square of n, which is 1, is also going to go away. And then you're back to the z that we discussed in class. Okay? But uh, just to go back to the formula, it's x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. And, and, and I can actually do, do that to find the probability. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is, um, well, um, we said the sampling distribution of the mean actually have a normal distribution and it's centered at mu and it has a sigma over root square of n and this is true as long as x had a normal distribution okay with centered as mu and sigma well it turns out that if x does not have a normal distribution you can still get a normal distribution at the level of the sampling distribution of the mean if n is greater than or equal to 25. I'm going to talk more about that in the next video.